Okay, guys, so um, evidence of reaction. We talked some about this the other day, and we've done some earlier in the year, but I want to go ahead and make our list out, making sure that you understand why you see these evidences of reactions, not just what they are. And so um, uh, the, the reactions will let us see at a macroscopic level, the level that we can see as macroscopic, evidences that are occurring at the microscopic, even smaller than that, the atomic level. So when those changes occur at the atomic level, we are going to be able to see macroscopic changes um, with our eyes or our senses or things or, or other measuring way, ways that we can measure. The reason why is this. In a chemical reaction, a new substance is being formed. Whatever that new substance is, it is going to have its own set of chemical and physical properties. It is that set of chemical and physical properties that new set that's appearing as this substance is being created in the reaction that is the evidence that we see uh, of a reaction occurring. And so when we see these new properties appear, then we have a good evidence of a chemical reaction occurring. The more evidences you see, the more certain you are of a chemical reaction. Some of these evidences you can see, and they're not chemical, they're physical. And so you know, the more we can stack up on each other, the more... Um, certain we are that it's a chemical reaction and not a physical change. And so um, I like to teach five basic types of evidences and so here's the first one, the formation of a precipitate. And so you can see in this test tube and we've done in class where we've seen precipitates being formed, um, you mix two liquids and you see a solid being produced. Um, well that solid is being produced because one of the one of the substances or that particular substance being produced is not soluble in water. And so if it's not soluble, it cannot dissolve. And so the way I like to look at it is it's essentially undissolving right before your eyes. And it's undissolving into the solid and then it uh, settles down to the bottom of the test tube, which is why we call it a precipitate because it rains down out of the solution to the bottom of the test tube. Um, and so that is a, a good evidence of a chemical reaction occurring is this formation of a precipitate. The second one is the production of a gas. Um, if one of the products being formed is a material or substance that at room temperature exists as a gas, then it's going to form not as a solid like a precipitate, but as a gas. And it's just simply going to bubble out of the um, solution you're looking at. And so very similar to the precipitate, but just it's forming as a different state of matter. And so it bubbles out of the uh, liquid solution. Uh, an energy change. So we talked about this a little bit and we've seen some, but I want to make sure you understand why there is an energy change. Um, the, the absorption or release of energy, it doesn't have to be heat. It can be light or other forms of energy. Uh, and this occurs because of the breaking and forming of chemical bonds. Um, when those chemical reactions are occurring, the thing that is occurring is the breaking of chemical bonds and the reforming of different chemical bonds. And chemical bonds contain energy. It's chemical potential energy is what it is. And different bonds contain different amounts of energy. And so if you break one bond that, um, I'm just going to throw some, some arbitrary numbers out there. You break one bond that contains 10 joules of energy and you form a new bond that only requires 5 joules of energy, then there's an excess of 5 joules of energy. 10 minus 5 to form the new bond makes 5 left over. That 5 joules of energy would be released in some form, quite often in heat energy, uh, but it could be different forms as well. And so the differences in the energy content of the chemical bonds being broken in form results in either the release of excess energy um, that is left over or it's going to absorb energy from the surrounding area, uh, the beaker, the test tube, your hand, whatever is touching the chemicals, and store that extra energy that's needed in the new chemical bond that requires lots of energy to form. And so that is why we have energy changes, uh, and those are good evidences of chemical reactions. Um, next one is a color change. Uh, we've got a penny here sitting in some nitric acid, and it will react upon the penny. And you can see that there's this green color, and that is a, a color change that occurs during this chemical reaction. Um, so if, um, if color is a physical property, if a new substance is being formed and it has a new color as its property, then you'll see the evidence of that color macroscopically. 
And then lastly, an odor change. Um, again, if we're making a new substance and that new substance has a distinctive odor, then you might smell it. It could be bad, it could be good. Uh, it doesn't really, uh, there's no um, law, it has to be a bad smell or a good smell. It's just a smell. And so whatever that smell may be is what you might see. And so really what I really want you to understand and really take from this little short section is the fact that um, the reason why you're seeing these evidences is because some new substance is being created. And the creation of that new substance that wasn't in your test tube previously um, has the potential of showing itself macroscopically with new colors or new odors or new uh, states of matter or, um, you know, whatever. And so it, in looking for those evidences and, and, and using our senses to see, um, we can, uh, or smell or whatever, we can sometimes easily identify whether or not we have a chemical change occurring or not. Sometimes we can just throw chemicals together and nothing happens. And if, if you don't see anything happening, then that may be evidence of no chemical reaction occurring. It could be evidence that the chemical reaction is occurring very, very slowly and it's not fast enough for you to observe it. Um, but that's a different unit that we would discuss later on. All right, guys. So short and sweet, just make sure you understand the concept of new substance, new products, uh, result in new characteristics that are visible or smellable or whatever. All right. Thanks, guys.